Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Three, Video One, Three Point One: Position and Velocity Vectors. The objectives for today is be able to describe an object's position using unit vectors, be able to determine an object's average and instantaneous velocity in two or three dimensions. Let's take a look at the position vector. So here is a particle P right over here. It's in the position right, right over here. How do we describe the position vector? Position vector R of a particle P at the instant shown in the diagram right over here is a vector that goes from the origin of the coordinate system, right from origin O, to this P. The components of vector R are X, Y, and Z. So here is the X component. Here is Y component, and here is Z component. So we can write a position vector as Xi plus Yj plus Zk to indicate the position of a, a point P. That's called the position vector. Average velocity. Suppose this particle moves from point P1 to P2 from from uh, position R1 to R2, vector R2. How do we find average velocity? If a particle moves from position, position R1 to position R2, that's position vector, in time interval delta t, the displacement during this time, delta R, would be equals R2 minus R1. R2, remember we did a vector a subtraction, that's the components of x subtract, i plus components y subtract, and the difference between z times k. So that is the vector a difference, that's a displacement. The average velocity is the displacement over time, it's r2 minus r1 over t2 minus t1. So what is delta R? Delta R is x2 minus x1 i plus y2 minus y1 j plus z2 minus z1 k. So all this over delta t, this is what you get. So v average equals to actually the x component, the average x component plus average y component plus average z component. So in chapter two, we learned one dimension. This is what we have uh, learned. So x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1, that is a one dimension, one dimension velocity in the x direction. So in this chapter, you simply just do the same thing, but you add the two other dimensions. Instantaneous velocity is the limit of average velocity as the time interval approaches to zero. So instantaneous velocity is the limit. Delta t approaches to zero. This part is your average velocity. We know this expression when delta t approaches to zero. Delta x over delta t becomes dx over dt. This similarly, dy over dt and plus dz over dt. dx over dt, that is your instantaneous velocity in the vx direction. This is instantaneous velocity in the y direction. This is instantaneous velocity in the z direction. As you can see, so this chapter is kind of combined a chapter 1 and 2 together. So v equals dr over dt equals vxi plus vyj plus vzk. Very similar to position vector. So instead of giving you, give you the position components, it gives you the velocity components. So to find the magnitude of this vector, we can use Pythagorean theorem. The instantaneous velocity vector is always tangent to the path. See this dashed line, this blue dashed line, that's the path. So <clears throat> the velocity at this point is tangent to the path. This V has two components, Vx and Vy. And we can also describe this alpha to represent the direction of the velocity. So in two dimensions, the magnitude is just 2 vx squared plus vy squared. And tangent alpha 
equals to vy over vx. But remember, right, we need to see the values. Is that positive or negative in order to determine directions? Let's uh, take a look at this example. A robotic vehicle, a rover, is exploring the surface of Mars. The landing craft is the origin of the coordinates, and the surrounding Martian surface lies in the xy plane. The rover, which we represent as a point, has xy coordinates that varies with time. So here is x equals to 2 minus 0.25 times t squared. Here is y equals 1t plus 0.025t cubed. As you can see, at a time t equals to 0, the rover is at x coordinate, 2 meters from the origin. Question A. Find the rover's coordinate and its distance from the lander at t equals to 2. So we have to find x at x. Uh, what is x at t equals to 2? To find that, we substitute t equals to 2 into that, that equation. So x equals to 2 minus 0.25 times 2 squared. And that gives you 1. Similarly, we can find position in the y coordinate. y at 2 equals to 1 times 2 plus 0 0.025 times 2 to the 3. You should get 2.2. So the uh, distance, distance from the lander, lander is at our origin. So the distance from the lander is just the a magnitude of the uh, placement vector. So that equals x squared plus y squared gives you 2.4. Question B, find a rover's displacement and average velocity vector during the time interval t equals to 0 to t equals to 2. So the first question is the distance from the origin, right? The second one is from the rover itself at t equals to 0 to t equals to 2. So how far the rover has moved, that's the displacement. To find a displacement, we'll have to find a difference in x plus difference in y. So x at 2 minus x at 0, i plus y at 2 minus y at 0. So x at 2 is 1 right over here. What is x at 0? x at 0 is substitute t equals to 0, so x equals to 2, x 0 equals to 2. Similarly, we can do y at 2, we figured out is 2.2. What is y at 0? You put a t equals to 0 in this equation, so y equals to 0. So that is your y value. So you ended up with the position at t equals to, uh, the displacement between t equals to 0 to t equals 2 is negative 1 meter i in the x direction plus 2.2 meters in the y direction. Average velocity is displacement over time. Here is a displacement, negative 1, i plus 2.2j divided by time. The time interval is 2 seconds. So this is your average velocity. Part C, derive a general expression for rover's instantaneous velocity vector. Express the instantaneous velocity at t equals to 2 in component form. That's like what is vx and what is vy, and also in terms of magnitude and direction. So there are three things we have to uh, worry about in part C. Instantaneous velocity is the derivative of a dr over dt. So what is r? Uh, well, r equals to x i plus y j. So, so v is dx over dt i plus dy over dt j. So here is x function and here is y function. We do derivative for x and y, so this is what we have. How do we find the um, t equals to 0, t equals to 2 seconds? At t equals to 2 seconds, what is vx? vx is negative 0.5 times 2, so give you a negative 1. What is y? y is 1 plus 0 0.075 times 2 squared, so you should have 1.3. This is a components form at t equals to 2 seconds. Or you can say v... Um, at t equals to 2 seconds, v equals a negative 1, i plus 1.3j. Next one, in terms of magnitude and direction, how do we find magnitude here? Magnitude is negative 1 squared 
plus 1.3 squared, right? Vx squared plus Vy squared. How do we find the direction? We use inverse 10. But take a look at this. Y is positive, X is negative. So this is in second quadrant. Remember, how do you find the alpha in second quadrant? So it's 128 degrees. Let's take a look at a graph. So here is your rover at zero. This, I mean, this is the lander. Lander is at zero. Here is the rover where it start. Start at on the x axis at x equals to two. So it moves along this dashed line. This is at time t equals to two. So this is r two, and this between zero r t equals to zero to t equals to two. We have found this displacement. And we have found average velocity. We also found instantaneous velocity right over here. This alpha is 128 degrees because it's going in the direction in second quadrant. So it's y is positive, but x is negative. So that's position, path, and the velocity of the rover. Let's take a look at another example. Given a position vector, r equals bt squared i plus ct cubed j, where b and c are positive constants, when does the velocity vector make an angle 45 degrees with x and y axis? So this is asking you about velocity. So velocity means instantaneous velocity. So let's find instantaneous velocity doing the derivative. So this is 2bt in the x direction, 3ct squared in the y direction. So when does the vector make an angle 45 degrees with both x and y? That means at x components equals to y components, so then the x and y, the v is making 45 degrees. Vx has to be equals to Vy. 2bt has to be equals to 3ct squared. <coughs> so solve this equation, we have two solutions. t can be 0, or t can be 2b over 3c. You can cancel out, and this is how you solve. Well, if t equals to 0, v equals to 0. If v equals to 0, it doesn't make any angle. So that is an invalid solution. So the answer is t equals to 2b over 3c. Has to your understanding, 3.1. In which of these situations would the average velocity vector v average over an interval be equal to to the instantaneous velocity v at end of the interval. So, so in what case is the average velocity is the same as instantaneous velocity at the end? One, a body moves along a curved path at a constant speed. But if the path is curved, that means velocity is changing. So the average velocity cannot be equals to instantaneous velocity at the end. Number two, a body moving along a curved path. So if the path is curved, the average cannot be equals to your instantaneous. Number three, a body moves along a straight line at a constant speed. Well, if it's move at straight line, along a straight line at constant speed, its average velocity and its instantaneous velocity are always the same. Uh, four, a body moves along a straight line by speeding up. If it speed up, it's velocity change. So the answer is three. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.